Howdy, boys and girls. It's me, Bob Harris. It's week one. Is everybody excited? Am I the only one who's excited? Probably not. Well, I'm sure the people who played Cam Akers and Allen Robinson are excited, but not in a good way, right? What a mess that Thursday night football, the Rams offense. What do we make of that? We'll talk about some of that today. Uh, have your questions. Hey, Pedro, season is finally here. Good morning, Andrea. Appreciate you showing up. Uh, we'll give people a minute to show up, get some of the top news stories today. Darren Waller just signed a new contract extension, an additional $51 million. Gives him this. So it's a three year extension. He's now under contract uh, for uh, what, five years, I think, uh, 60 some million dollars. So 30 years old. He'll play that out, probably finish his time as a Raven, maybe play a little longer, or as a Raider, ex-Raven. Uh, hello, Brian Larkin. Hello, Roblox K, who wants to know M. Brown or DJ Moore. How is everyone? We'll get to the questions here momentarily. Just give uh, people a chance to show up. If you like uh, what you see here, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, all those things you do on YouTube to feed the algorithm and make it happy. Because that makes me happy. Even if you dislike me, it makes me happy. Isn't it? It's like a no a no lose situation. I love that. Uh, I am Bob Harris from footballdiehards.com. It's a website where you'll find things that you'll enjoy if you play the fantasy football. Go check it out. If you have not ordered yet, our uh, flash update in season service is up and running. Uh, tons of great articles by the likes of uh, Casey Joyner, John Laub, uh, Justin Lanero, Jamie Calandro, myself. Uh, we'll have more in the coming weeks. Uh, early in the week, you'll get uh, Evan Tarciano will jump in with the waiver wire wizard. Um, we'll have uh, Joe Colano with the early injury reports, etc. So tons of content available to you. Gary Davenport, too. The shadow knows and the IDP tip sheets. Everything available. Rankings are available. Tools are available. And a constant flow of news and information. So I want to touch on a few of those items right now. Again, I um, mentioned Darren Waller gets the extension, but more important is the injuries. J.K. Dobbins listed as questionable, limited all week in practice. We'll see if he can hit the field. George Kittle seems less likely to play, uh, the least likely to play of all the injured players, it seems, this week. Did not practice all week. Has a groin issue. Going to be bad weather in Chicago. Slippery field. Bad playing service. He's a tough guy. Hopefully it works out, but shouldn't say you get your hopes too high. Chris Godwin, a game-time decision. Russell Gage, also a game-time decision. That's a Sunday night game, people. That's not good news. Uh, Michael Thomas, questionable. Seems like he's trending in a good direction, but that's one to watch as uh, is Drake London in the same game. Listed as questionable. Alan Lazard, doubtful. Do not expect him to play. Let me retweet something about this very live stream right now so people can find us and join us. I see the questions coming in. I will get to them momentarily. I do this every Saturday, noon Eastern time. Happy to have you here. Happy to answer your questions. Uh, some other news and notes of interest. Uh, James Robinson looks like he'll play this week. Not on the injury report. Practicing fully. We'll see what happens, what kind of workload we can expect early on. According to Cam Akers, guys coming off Achilles injuries maybe aren't great. Okay, I'm, going, I'm getting gratuitous with this. Uh, Deontay Johnson, not on the injury report or removed from the injury report on Friday. So good news there. Uh, and so, so a few, it's a few issues of interest, right. That we'll have to watch for Sunday morning. If you, uh, if you have me, you know, if you, if you're hit the site and by the way, tonight, we'll also have a video tonight, uh, Jamie Calandro and, uh, Eric Romoff, 9 PM Eastern time. We'll be doing the DFS, uh, lineup video. Uh, that'll be great content as well. I'll be doing videos here every Wednesday night. We're working up the format and the planning on that. In addition to these Saturday appearances. So you'll get your questions answered every week, no matter what. We'll see how many questions I answer on the Wednesday we're, we're working on. It. But we're going to dig in some topics that you're really going to love. So uh, keep an eye out on that in your emails and in your notifications. If you follow me on Twitter, if you hit that notification bell on YouTube, it'd be great. Hit the subscribe button, it'd be great. All those things would be great. Uh, appreciate everyone showing up again. Uh, noon every Saturday, the Ask Me Anything lineup questions, chit-chat, general shenanigans, whatever you got up up your sleeves. So I'll get into some of the questions here and we'll get rolling. Um, uh, what do we have first? Uh, Roblox, K, uh, Marquise Brown to DJ Moore. Like, so, uh, you know, this kind of maybe I'm probably playing, I'm probably playing Marquise Brown now that we know Zach Ertz is questionable. Rondale Moore is ruled out. Seems like it's going to be a pretty bare, narrow band of targets. It's a pretty close call. I think, you know, if you're, if you're looking for a super high floor and maybe you have an upside guy, ahead of him, Tyreek Hill, or somebody that's kind of maybe more volatile or you're concerned about the initial weekly production, you know, DJ Moore is going to get his solid, you know, level production. But I'd maybe take a little swing for the fence in this one. 
and uh, and go ahead and go Marquise Brown, especially given the circumstances. I mentioned Rondell Moore out. By the way, Zach Ertz listed as questionable in this one as well. Don't know how. I don't know what they'll get out of get out of him this week. It seems like the uh, the issue isn't whether he'll play; it's a, it's how much he'll play, according to Cliff Kingsbury. So. Uh, I might be looking to cash in on one of the few good pieces. I mean, the opposing defense is going to know this as well, right? So that's a concern, but I think Marquise Brown is the kind of player. It's going to be hard to totally contain him, and they're going to need him. Okay, Andrew needs one running back and one flex from Tony Pollard, Ramondi Stevenson, James Robinson, Elijah Moore, PPR. I'm probably going with the first two there. Uh, James Robinson, I'm going to give it a week to see what he's all about. Uh, Elijah Moore playing with Joe Flacco against a really tough defense. It's pretty healthy right now. Probably going to avoid that one as well this week. Oh, we'll see. You know, I don't know that Joe Flacco is measurably worse than uh, Zach Wilson. We just don't know. I, I think Mike White might be better, but we won't find out that out unless uh, something happens to Joe Flacco or he struggles mightily. So, so I'm going to go with those first two, Andrea. And <clears throat> look, we're hoping uh, for that Dallas, you know, Tampa Bay game. It's the first time in the history of the NFL that the two top offenses in the league have faced each other in week one. There are some issues at Tampa Bay, too, with Godwin, Gage, both ailing a little bit. There is no Gronk. So they'll have to figure out how to make up some ground. They have some issues at the in the middle of the offensive line. But Dallas Dallas has some issues at offensive tackle. Tyron Smith's a big deal, right? Don't, uh, don't underestimate his uh, – or at least overlook it. I mean, the numbers have gone down significantly for the Cowboys. Their rushing totals go down about a yard per carry. More pressure on Dak Prescott. More sacks of Dak Prescott. You wonder, though. I'm kind of keen on seeing Dak Prescott run more. Uh, don't worry about Dak Prescott's ankle. They say it was just a, him changing shoes and caused him some issues for a day and some discomfort. They put a lot of effort into having him checked out for just discomfort, but they can do that, so. Uh, Jeff M, Rodgers or Ryan? I'm guessing these are quarterbacks. I'm going to play Aaron Rodgers in this one. It's a good matchup. I think he'll figure out the wide receiver situation. Uh, even without Alan Lazard, maybe one of the youngsters steps up. Maybe Rovio Dubs turns into a thing all of a sudden that we, after all the offseason hype. Uh, maybe not. Maybe Christian Watson, despite missing all of the summer, with a, coming off a neat procedure. Maybe he rises up. Maybe not. Maybe Sammy Watkins. A week one all-star, if ever there was one, delivers big this week. Randall Cobb was also there, so they have some pieces. Uh, so I'm, I'm going Rodgers. Like, I'm not against Ryan. I don't think it's a horrible matchup for him. Obviously, the Texans are not a great team. Uh, just uh, have a little more faith in Rodgers. And I know there are people out there who think we've been totally dismissive of Rodgers, uh, not me and us in particular, but the fantasy community in general has, you know, kind of been dismissive of him. And uh, we understand why Devontae Adams is not there. Aaron Rodgers was good, has been good without Devontae Adams, people. <clears throat> and he often figures out and people will rise up. So he's got Aaron Jones as a receiving option as well. So that's probably the direction I'm going. Um, <clears throat> I do have high hopes for Ryan. I'm maybe a little higher on Ryan than other people. Um, just in general over the course of the season and, you know, maybe even this week. I don't think it's a horrible matchup for him. Still going Rodgers. Pedro is psyched with his team after his draft. He landed Jefferson with the eighth pick. That is a good, that is a, that might be a steal. Although Cooper Cup kind of, you know, made a pretty strong opening argument that he should have remained wide receiver one with his, with his game um, against the Bills. Got Pitts, got ETN, got Godwin, got Lamar Jackson. Uh, look, I think that's solid. ETN gives me some concern because we'll see what, you know, we have to see what James Robinson is. James Robinson might be a bigger factor than any of us expected. Or, According to Cam Akers, he might not. I'm rubbing it in Akers, people. I apologize. I didn't invest in Akers. I just uh, didn't have a good feeling about him. I'm not saying I foresaw what, you know, this opening game. And I think I should remind you right here and now. This is the part where we should say, what happened in week one is not what's going to happen in week two. Where we are today is not where we'll be in October. So I'm going to get a lot of questions, and we're going to hear this when you listen to my SiriusXM Fantasy Sports radio show, as you can do four times a week, or NFL radio show tonight, uh, 8 to 11 Eastern time. It's simulcast on the Fantasy Channel, but we were on the NFL radio. So if you're listening, you want to call in, listen to the phone number. We'll have Marcus Grant from NFL.com on tonight. Uh, you see him on NFL Network as well. Uh, so check that out. But the, you know these, these are all things. We're going to get questions from people saying, should I drop Allen Robinson? You know, you probably should not drop Allen Robinson. I'm just going to go out on a limb. 
Uh, it wasn't great. Like, I'm not going to pretend it was good, right? Nobody should pretend it was good. Nobody should pretend Cam Akers is, is in an ideal situation, but you put an investment into him, you might as well let it play out a little bit. If you have room on your roster, look for other players who might rise up and, and cover you. If you draft a decent depth, you know, you're obviously, you know, it's going to be hard to start Cam Akers going forward until we see something from him. You know, that might mean missing out on a big game. Next week could be the Cam Akers week that we've all been waiting for, and you won't know it. But you can, it's it's hard to play it until you see it, right? So, but I like this draft, Pedro. I think you did a fine job. Jefferson with the eighth is a is a huge steal. I'm um, expecting Cooper Cup like production. Seems pretty reasonable. Love Joe Mixon. Uh, love Pitts. Etn for me, you know, I, I don't think it's an unfair. It's a, it's a reasonable value for him, and I think he's still going to be a solid play. I just feel like his ceiling maybe is capped a little bit if Robinson plays enough, and that probably won't be this week. Love Godwin once he's healthy and love Lamar. Good job. Mark Spafford says, hi, Bob. Any good news about A-Rob besides playing the Falcons next week? Falcons gave up a lot of fantasy points, almost 40, fan almost 40 points a game, fantasy points a game to wide receivers uh, last year. So that's positive. It's one of the reasons I like uh, Michael Thomas this week, if he plays. Go read my uh, DFS uh, three and out. It's a tournament article. I just pick some people at various price points and, and uh, you'd say, I want to play them. And there's, I pick one that I don't really want to play. Thomas is on the list of players I'm interested in. If he plays, then I get it. If you're a little nervous about that this week, it's perfectly understandable. Uh, and uh, and you can avoid him. Um, but, you know, getting back to A-Rob. Um, look, is it possible that last year's A-Rob is the A-Rob? Sure. That seems like the least likely outcome on the range of possible outcomes. I think he's still a better player, but you know there was some talk. You know after the game, I think someone thought that uh, that Matthew Stafford was lamenting to Sean McVay that Allen Robinson didn't even try for that goal line, that end zone pass that uh, they lobbed up to him. So I don't know. Maybe there are issues beyond what we saw. They they put it down to being zone coverage. Uh, I believe the zone coverage is played a lot in the NFL, and and if they Rams don't have a handle on that, that's not. Allen Robinson's fault. But anyway, I do expect more. And we'll see. I mean, when you have Cooper Cup there, we all, you know, there's people out there. I talk to people who cover the Rams who are predicting that Allen Robinson would lead that team in receiving. I think those predictions can go out the window. Uh, Cooper Cup established a pretty good head start. So maybe not totally out the window, but I, I do think there's hope. I wouldn't give up on him. And, and like, you know, if, depending on where you drafted him, you're probably still going to want to play him as a starter or a flex. And I probably would again next week, given the matchup. Andrea. Needs a flax, Michael Thomas, Tyler Boyd, Nico Collins, Raheem Mostert, or Jalen Tolbert. Some some not good positive uh, talk about uh, Jalen Tolbert on the local radio stations, and I know at least one observer there uh, suggested that he could be an inactive this week. So I dial back on him and we'll take a wait and see approach. Right? Wouldn't be uh, wouldn't hurt you. You have a lot of good options here. Uh, <clears throat> so if Michael Thomas is active, and that's an early uh, early kickoff in the afternoon. I kind of like him. If you want to play it safe, Tyler Boyd seems like a safe play, you know, keeps you from getting a zero until you see how things play out. If you want to give Thomas a week, he hasn't played since like, I think 2021 pair of ankle surgeries. I like him a lot based on the things people are telling me, uh, this off season, all off season and all summer, right? The hamstring is a recent issue. That's, you know, is a concern, right? But if he's on the field, I'm assuming they feel like he can do something. But the, uh, the bigger concern is he hasn't played for a while. And so everyone I've talked to, Mike Triplett from ESPN, Catherine Terrell from ESPN, uh, Larry Holder from The Athletic, uh, Hendricks from the uh, John Hendricks from the SI.com, all these people have been really super positive about him, say his attitude's really good. You know, so it's a different quarterback. He last played with Drew Brees. And maybe if, you know, with Jarvis Landry there, there's more work on the outside. Maybe that doesn't work to Thomas's advantage. I still like him an awful lot. I think Nico Collins is a bit of a wild card here. Um, I do like the upside there. Might wait to see how it develops. And Raheem Mostert, I like an awful lot. Don't know what the workload's going to be. Chase Edmonds was on the edge report earlier this week, came off at the end of the week. I think he's refined and good to go. He's default number one. I'd probably go, I'd probably go Thomas or Boyd, depending on what you want for your roster, for your, you know, what your roster needs, Andrea. So maybe Michael Thomas, a little bit more of a swing for the fence play if he's active and Tyler Boyd, a little safer play, uh, albeit lower end. Charles Davis wants to know, Brandon Cooks, Gibson, or Bateman for my PPR flex. I'm probably going to go Gibson. I'm probably playing Gibson as much as I can until Brian Robinson Jr. returns from the unfortunate incident we talked about uh, two weeks ago, I guess. 
I'm going to say, you know, the Gibson concerns or or the, the way we've kind of diminished him. And, like, he had fallen down to, what, round eight or nine in drafts as Robinson Rose. And I, that's understandable. Robinson's gone. If we went back uh, – if we went back a little bit, uh, like the last two years, I think the disappointment we have in Gibson is the fact that he didn't emerge as a truly elite. A lot of people expected top 10 production. I mean, a lot of people that know a lot of things. Mike Clay from ESPN, you know, told me, you know, heading into last year, he thought that, you know, Gibson had top 10 potential. And I don't think he was wrong. He had that potential. He just didn't fulfill it. So there's still concerns there in the form of J.D. McKissick. Uh, but, you know, I think they're going to ride him. And so the last couple of years, I mean, Gibson has been pretty productive, right? He just hasn't been the super high-end play we expected. So I'm going to go with him in this scenario and see how it plays out. I love Brandon Cooks. Wouldn't be against that. I love Bateman. Wouldn't be against that. I'm going Gibson. These are all three really good options. Uh, and, and, you know, is a little bit of a personal, you know, a, a guy that I've kind of predicted to be kind of an upside play. Uh, but this is a pretty easy call. By the way, if you go to the uh, Flash Update, the footballdiehards.com, we do have in our rankings a flex section that will help you sort through some of those things as well. Brian Larko, is Eno Benjamin the number two running back in Arizona? If so, would I drop Tyler Algier for him? Uh, it sounds like Eno Benjamin is the number two. Things may shake out differently as we get into the games. You know, maybe maybe if something were to happen to James Conner long term, maybe they go to Daryl Williams, the uh, the veteran, the former chief. Uh, but I think Eno Benjamin is number two week to week in games, and, and so. You're playing two different things here. I think in Tyler Algier, you invested in a guy who may emerge as a, the lead back in his offense without injury or without issues. I don't know that it happens right away. Don't know that it happens at all. But I think that's, to me, that's my anticipated outcome. And I know the people who cover the team on a daily basis say that's also in part of their expectations. We just haven't seen a lot from this backfield this summer, right? We did, you know, it's funny. I, I use the same old joke every year, but it still applies. Uh, September is the new August, right? Nobody plays much in the exhibition season. They're bubble wrapped and they're looking at other things apparently than the players that we want to see. Right? So, so I probably want to hang on to Algier. Um, if you have James Conner, I don't know that, you know, Benjamin is the direct handcuff, but it would be good to have a piece of that backfield behind him. So, so not against not against this move. It seems like Ryan, you're leaning towards it. I still like to hang on to Algier and see what happens. Albert or Irv Smith. I'm probably going Irv Smith. I probably also have a anti Albert O uh, view, right? I mean, <clears throat> number one, Russell Wilson has never made extensive use of the tight ends. Maybe that was more a factor of the scheme than it was Russell Wilson. Our rankings, by the way, like Albert O better than Irv Smith. This is just a little gut feeling for me. And the gut feeling comes from the fact the team really seems to want to play Greg Dulcich. Uh, he's on IR. They won't play him. Uh, and Alberto is kind of it. They kept him on the field an awful lot, kind of like the Dolphins did with Mike Gusecki this summer. And the, the Titans did with Traylon Burks. And we viewed this, and it was portrayed as kind of a negative in that they were on the field. But, you know, the co coaches in all cases said, well, look, they just need the reps. They need time. They need the work because we're going to use them. Okay, so if you have a strong feeling about this one, I like Smith. I like the Vikings offense. It's a pretty tough matchup for the Vikings in Green Bay. They play some good defense. Uh, so, and I don't know, Seattle's going to be as formidable in that regard. It's a Russell Wilson revenge game. All the pieces are in place for a big game. So uh, our rankings say Alberto. I should go with that. My gut says Irv Smith. Pedro Resto, I have ETN all in and are on the blue chip ETN who is who he have not seen as of yet. Robinson, should I scare the didn't handcuff the yet? ETN. Uh, so I don't know if I'd be scared of him. I think the Mike DiRocco from ESPN, kind of like the way he put it, uh, was uh, was basically the uh, that by the end of the season, if they have if if Robinson has more carries but ETN has more, more total touches, he wouldn't be totally surprised. So there's that. And I, and I think that's a pretty reasonable expectation. Is Henderson the starter for now? Uh, according to Cam Akers, he is. I keep taking shots at Cam. Shots fired. Uh, so, I, like, I don't know that we know, you know, I, I don't know if one week is enough to define the season. For now, though, Mark, I think, you know, that's the key statement. For now, obviously, he is. 32-bit, my friends there. Love you guys. Uh, Mooney and, li and likely for Kittle. Mooney and likely for Kittle. I don't think I love Mooney this week. Um, I don't think Kittle's going to play. 
Good morning, Bob, says Dominic Conti. My draft is tonight. Mm, points from Thursday will count. Is it a quarterback PPR league? I have a fourth pick. I'm pretty sure Allen goes first. I'm pretty sure he is too. So if Mahomes and Herbert are gone, who would be four? Lamar for me. Lamar for me. It would be Lamar for me. You know, and I mean, I, there's some people who are really high on Jalen Hurts. I'm one of those people. And, you know, if you if you, if you liked one better than the other, I would get it. Kyler Murray's also in that discussion as well. Uh, could very well go third. Uh, so I like that. Uh, full PPR, Amon Ross St. Brown or Miles Sanders. Laws of flexology do not apply here. If you're not familiar with the laws of flexology, the first law of flexology is feature back over a wide receiver every time for me, right? But Miles Sanders, not a true feature back. Laws do not apply. Laws do not apply. Uh, so yeah, watch out for that. Here we go. Pick Dobbins over handcuffing ETM with Robinson. I had to go with Dobbins in seventh. I think that I think that's a fair, you know, I think that's a fair approach. I think the upside of Dobbins and like even the, expecting ETN to be the primary guy, you you you've kind of put together a thing here, Pedro. Let me discuss. All right, because I think this is a smart approach. You have a guy that you feel pretty confident early in the season. I don't know what Robinson's gonna be, right? I don't know if he's gonna be at full speed. Uh, we don't see a lot of guys coming back, you know, super effectively from uh, Achilles and it, you know it was in the 32-bit uh, Facebook or uh, Twitter space yesterday. We had John. He had John Shipley. They had John Shipley in there, and he was talking about it. And I've talked about this with Mike Dempsey, my co-host, who also covers the Jags on a regular basis. But my co-host on Sirius, and the Jaguars really seem to think that James Robinson is a different kind of guy. We'll see, right? I mean, I think everyone thinks they have a different kind of guy. We'll see if he can rebound and come back. Uh, so, and by the way, those Twitter spaces are a good time. You should check them out. Uh, at the 32 bit, at 32 bit, if you can see them in the thing. Same thing on Twitter. Go check them out, follow them. They're great. Uh, C uh, CAC. Is that how you say that? C K A C Sports. Would you stash Josh Jacobs or Elijah Moore as a flex? Half point PPR. Would I start? Not stash. So I'm still a little bit all in on Jacobs uh, at this point. I think this is going to be a high-scoring game. I think he should still get the goal line carries. This might be a situation. I think there's a handful of situations where we're really concerned about the running back. Turns out one of those was the Rams for me, and it turned out like kind of a worst-case scenario. So maybe it does in Vegas as well. Maybe it does, you know, in maybe the New York Jets where we keep hearing things like uh, – like uh, Michael Carter is the heartbeat of the offense. What? Brees Hall is the guy, right? No, maybe not. We don't know. So these are all things that are a little bit, you know, a little bit concerning. I'm starting Jacobs this week. And also Elijah Moore, as I mentioned earlier, playing with Joe Flacco. Not an enthusiastic endorser of this against the Baltimore Ravens, uh, who pretty much close to full speed on defense. Looks like a tough role for that. So I'm going to go Jacobs and hope he gets that full load. Uh, if you're averse to this, after what you saw with Cam Akers, it's understandable. Uh, and I don't think it's a wrong thing, but I'm going Jacobs. The, the theory here is they run the wheels off him, right? He's not on the, you know, they didn't pick up his option. Uh, so, you know, they, they don't have, so that's a two-sided, two, two-edged sword, right? They don't have a future investment in him. Uh, they have other guys on the roster. Maybe they want to get a closer look at. We've seen uh, Amir Abdullah get a little bit of run you know, kind of as, a, as the receiving option there. And we know the Patriots have always used, a, a, you know, developed good receiving back. So maybe Jacobs is not on the field as much as he wants. So those are the concerns. I still think he'll be, uh, at the end of Sunday, a more productive play uh, than Elijah Moore for me. Kevin L. Stevens, uh, playoff team in 25-man PPR Dynasty League. I can only keep two of the following players, and I own uh, running back James Conner, running back Ronald Jones, Daryl Williams, Zeno Benjamin, Tristan Ebner and wide receiver Sammy Watkins. If you need someone who can probably play this week, it's obviously Sammy Watkins. If you need someone beyond any amount of time, it's obviously not Sammy Watkins. Um, boy, it's a tough call on the uh, on the handcuff there, as we talked about earlier, whether it's Daryl Williams or Eno Benjamin. You know, I think if we're something to happen over the course of this season, Daryl Williams might be the more likely guy to take over the lead role, but maybe Eno Benjamin playing a greater role. And beyond this year, I don't. there's no investment in Daryl Williams beyond that. I'd probably go Eno Benjamin there. I don't know if Ebner's going to turn into a thing or not. I don't know if he's just a one-hit wonder in training camp this year or not. We'll find out more about that. But, I, I, you know, Eno Benjamin seems to be a player on the rise. I'd go ahead and give that a shot. George Del Prete, I think. Hey, Bob. Happy new season. Thank you. 
Flex, Sutton, Damian Harris, Drake, London, Hunt, Leaning Harris. Think Denver will be up big at half and Sutton will be rested. I don't know if they're resting everyone, anyone in the first game too much. Bills didn't. Um, but <clears throat> I'm not against Harris. I, I have some concerns. That's another backfield that we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, Ramon Ray Stevenson garnering a lot of buzz. I don't think, you know, I think it's going to change week to week and it's going to be like the Denver backfield. We're not going to know until they're in the middle of the game who's going to get the, you know, who's going to become the hot hand or what. So, I think you're taking a little chance there. Remember, if the Broncos are up big at the half, do you think Sutton might not have been a part of that? So, um, not a guy. I won't veto the Harris, though. And Sutton, it, the decision for me is between Sutton and Harris as well. So, you're there. Miami defense or Cleveland? Pick two PPR, Edmonds. Pick two PPR, Edmonds, Dobbins, Dylan, Penny, Michael Carter being the heartbeat of the offense. Oh, yeah. Could the heartbeat of the offense not be a guy on the sideline cheering really loudly? I don't know. We'll find out. Maybe he is the literal heartbeat of the offense, the driving force, the piston. He's played well, by the way. We should know. And I know you guys know this, but, uh, you know, he played it in college alongside Javante Williams. They were both 1,000-yard rushers. I mean, he knows how to share the workload. He's a pretty explosive player. I'm playing the Miami defense, right? Now, somebody be said for Cleveland. They're, no doubt, or they're going up against Baker Mayfield. If you listen to Miles Garrett, he's not a, he's not a big Baker Mayfield fan. Reading b- between the lines, I don't even know if you need to read between the lines. But Miami going up against New England intrigues me because the New England offense has been semi dysfunctional over the course of the summer. Are they going to get everything right? I don't know. Miami's a tough defense anyway. Uh, you know, so I'm probably going with Miami. I, this is maybe a little hunchy of me, but uh, that's my choice. Mister Scampers, pleasure to see you, sir. Always a joy to show up in uh, in the chats. Rank KC wide receivers, please. This week or overall, over the course of the season? According to Patrick Mahomes, that's a futile exercise, right? We shouldn't probably do that, according to Patrick Mahomes. He says it's going to be different every week. And he might be right. He would know better than me. But for this week, I'm going Juju. I'm going MVS. I'm going, I think, I want to say Hardman. Hardman and then maybe more. So Moore's kind of been a little bit of an outlier this summer. We'll see. Um, but I think the guys that are going to matter are the top three. It will be uh, Juju, uh, Hardman, and MVS. Mm, let's see. Komet or Everett? PPR. You're asking the wrong person. I'm a Gerald Everett truther. Cole Komet's going to get the targets, right? I mean, you know, there's not a lot else there. In uh, in Chicago, all due respect to Equinemi St. Brown, he seems like a delightful person. Byron Pringle, maybe Byron Pringle becomes the thing. Vilas Jones, it sounds like, will not play this week. He's listed as doubtful. But I think we can all, you know, kind of look at how the targets are going to roll, and it's going to be Mooney, and it's going to be Komet. So I'm probably playing the volume there, but I'm going to remind you that the people who cover the Chargers on a daily basis are very excited about some of the plans for Gerald Everett. Let's we'll see if they come to fruition. By the way, this week, there will not be a Donald Parham. He's listed as doubtful. So... Won't have to deal with that fly in the ointment. And thank you for coming, George. I appreciate it. By the way, I'm Bob Harris. In case you're just getting here and you're wondering, who is this fool? What does he know? I don't know a lot. I just like to talk about football. Uh, You can find me at footballdiehards.com where the Flash Update uh, premium content is up and running. You can also still get the draft guide there if you are drafting. Premium content is all one price. If you use the promo code diehards, you'll get 15% off. Got a lot of great tools and information every damn week of the season. You cannot do better. I'll be here every Saturday at noon. We'll be having other video content. Come back tonight, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Jamie Calandro and Eric Romoff will be doing our DFS lineup show. That'll be a weekly feature. Uh, We're going to add more. There will be a Wednesday night show. We're working on that, and it's going to be very exciting, and I'm going to enjoy it very much, and I hope you do as well. And you can catch me on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio Mondays at 10 p.m., Thursdays at 10 p.m., Fridays at 10 p.m., Saturdays we're on NFL Radio, Channel 88, just one notch up the dial, but also on the Fantasy Channel, Simulcast from 8 to 11, and then you'll catch me on the pregame show with Jeff Manns uh, from 11 to 1 every week for the fastest two hours on radio. That sounded exciting. All right. Uh, Damian and Jason White, yeah, QB, PPR, start Pickens or Alec Pierce in one of my flex spots. Mahomes and Matt Ryan are my QBs. So oh, let's see what you did there with the, the Matt Ryan Pierce. That's So I like Pierce a little bit, but I mean, it just the momentum and like Pierce has been solid all summer, right? 
the momentum is behind Pickens. And I think Deontay Johnson is going to be fine. They say it's just a pain management issue, his shoulder. But what if he's not? <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm going to go ahead and go Pickens on this one. Uh, and I get you wanting to get the hook up there. I'm going to stick, I'm going to stick with the huge talent and the huge upside. Maybe Pierce is going to be fine if you want a, a reasonable floor. And they say he's pretty good in the red zone. I want to see a little bit more Pierce. I've seen some Pickens. It looks good. Scampers wants to know if I'm benching Juju or Thielen for Christmas Kirk in a half PPR. I believe he meant Christian Kirk. Um, uh, th that's really hard. I don't want to, I'm like, I'm such a Thielen guy that that's like almost an unfair question. Uh, I, I do like Kirk an awful lot. If you listen to our one and done draft last night, I picked him as my re receiver in week one. I'm going to say, uh, I'm probably, uh, Juju, I think it's fair. I just don't know what the hell's going to happen there. I think that's going to be a pretty explosive game, though. I think this is, this is a pretty good range of wide receivers. Or his second cousin, Christian. Thank you, Mr. Scamford. So I figured it out. Um, I'm having a hard time wanting to bench Thielen, honestly. And maybe the coverage is even, well, it's good coverage is either, uh, either way around. I want to say, I want to check what the algorithms on the, and I say this a lot, the algorithms, because we use, uh, we have a system that, on Football Diehards that does our rankings, and we kind of hand adjust them a little bit. I have Thielen ahead of Juju. Uh, and I have Kirk slightly after, so I think it's a good matchup against Washington. They have some injuries in the secondary. I have a hunch, but Kirk would be my hunchy guy, but I'm not benching Thielen. No way. Sitting on Brian Robinson, Pedro is in my IR. Figure I have nothing to lose. You do not. How do you feel about Gibson's running back schedule and perhaps locking the number one job in the next four weeks? I don't know that he locks it in, but I think he could be really productive. They seem to really like Brian Robinson. Look, uh, you know, performance changes everything, and if he's playing well and they're winning... He's going to keep playing, right? I just have the concerns overall that he hasn't really taken the role the way they want him to and they don't have the confidence in. One of the things that they talked about this summer, at least the local reporters, was uh, they want him to be more of a one-cut-and-run guy. And look, remember, he was a receiver in college, so he's still developing a little bit as a running back. And one of the things he does is he tends to you know, make more cuts and the ball comes away from his body, right, because he, he's moving around trying to keep his balance. And he fumbles. They don't like the fumbles. Fumbles are not good, turns out. Not fans of fumbles, our coaches. So if he secures the ball and they're, he's running well and they're winning games, it's entirely possible. And that's not a totally unfavorable schedule, at least the first half of it. So, Would I drop the, uh, Isaiah Pacheco for Terry Davis Price? Nope. Six and one, half dozen of the other. So yes, no and yes. So, you know, if you're feeling one more than the other, feel free. I think they're very similar guys. You're kind of, you know, hoping for some developments. And like we know, in both cases, developments could happen. I do think it may be a little foreshadowing that both of them are, you know, down the depth chart and didn't move into the number two spots. So I think it's a pick your poison situation there, Todd. Scampers, I got gotcha. you. Dominic Conti in my two quarterback league. Would I still pick Jackson uh, for over McCaffrey or Taylor? Uh, I'd, probably I'd probably take one of those two. I'd probably take one of those two uh, running backs there. I'd probably take one of those two running backs to take my chances at quarterback the next round. I think you'll still pretty get a, get a pretty good quarterback. But you know your league better than I do. And if my experience with two quarterback leagues has been uh, that they're, they're different. Like each one has its own dynamic. Like a lot of times I feel really comfortable with the way the quarterback situation plays out if I don't get one early. Fourth pick, you're going to come around. You're still going to get a pretty good quarterback. It's your second quarterback you may have issues with if people are going cuckoo for quarterbacks. So that might be a little bit – a little bit more of a uh, might be a little bit more of a you know your individual league issue. So if you think your league is really quarterback intensive, then yeah, maybe go ahead. But I'm I'd take McCaffrey. I, so I, my order would be I'm taking Allen and Herbert with one and two, and after that everybody's on the board, and starting with Taylor and McCaffrey. So that helps you figure it out a little bit. I hope that does. Uh, Todd G has a lair, but since they kept Ronald Jones not feeling good about Pacheco, I kind of agree with that. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate that. Appreciate the Dempsey appreciates all the good comments. Pedro lost out on a good wide receiver four after drafting Jefferson Godwin, De 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 Devontae Smith. I drafted Pickens, Jahan Dotson, Sky Moore. I think I can start Pickens and Dotson. I think you can start Pickens and Dotson every week. I mean, I think he's in the starting lineup for Washington, and he seems to be a pretty advanced player. So, and Pickens maybe needs a little more other things to happen and say hello to the yard guys because they're saying hello to you 
Thanks, Damian, Jason White. I appreciate you coming. I appreciate everyone coming. Uh, really, uh, you know, enjoy these this time. This is as much for me as you. I mean, I know you guys like getting your questions answered. I like talking about your questions, right? It kind of helps me sort through my own issues. We're all dealing with these. I've got 30 lineups to set every week. I have to talk through all these issues and uh, having you all here helping me uh, understand what's important and what's not important and what's on your mind is very helpful. Uh, end of bench, Christian Watson or KJ Osborne? Thanks. So, you know, if you're like looking for a guy who will help you avoid a zero, it's probably KJ Osborne. If you're looking for a guy who may emerge as a team's wide receiver one at some point, that's more likely to be Christian Watson. Neither, not guaranteed there. Osborne's role is pretty much cooked in, right? I mean, I think it's, I think it's pretty solid. Uh, so I would be, you know, I would be fine having him. You know, I think he's a guy like, uh, I think uh, I talked about Tyler Boyd earlier, a guy that helps you avoid a zero. Osborne does that, but he has a little bit of upside too, right? I think he's, you know, a little more upside of a, of a play than, uh, than like Tyler Boyd would be, right? It's going to be more, you know, I just think, you know, he has the touchdowns last year. I, uh, so I like Watson a little better as an end of the bench guy, right? A guy that you were hoping to never have to play. I'm willing to buy that lottery ticket and hope he turns into a winning number. Boyd or Devontae Parker PPR? Probably, I'm probably playing Devontae Parker. I'm all in on Devontae Parker, and I apologize for that. I'm probably going to regret that. We heard a lot of different, uh, you know, a lot of different reports out of New England, uh, aside from the ones that just said uh, that the offense is horrible. We got different reports saying at various times, Nelson Aguilar is the guy, Jacoby Myers is the guy. By the way, he's listed as questionable this week. But consistently, I thought, you know, while other guys were flaring up and there was a lot of talk about Kendrick Bourne kind of maybe being in the doghouse and, you know, all, the, all those things may well be true. The consistent reporting was that Devontae Adams looked really good. So I'm probably playing Devontae Adams, I said. Ha, I wish. You wish. Devontae Parker was looking good. I'm going to probably go ahead and play that revenge game. Somewhere out there, Michael Fabiano is pounding on the wall. It's a revenge game. Um so yeah, I wouldn't be. I, I'd be playing Parker in this one over Boyd. There's recent news about reducing Fournette snaps. Concern any of you? I wasn't able to draft Rashad White. No. So I'm going to tell you why, right? So that tweet it was from Greg Amon, who, who kind of just threw it out there, and he noted that that you know Fournette was kind of in the 60, 70 percent snap range, and then he did like three games of 80, and the hamstring became an issue. Whatever. Like one running back last year was in the 80 percent snap range, right? It was Jonathan Taylor. That's the number. No others. So every team does some rotating and spelling and things like that. So I think I'm not I'm not super concerned other than, you know, Leonard Fournette's a year older. He's going to have a heavy workload. You know, those are the only concerns for me. I still rank him as a top 10 back going into the season. I think Rashad White could have some, you know, some value as his backup. Um, but I don't know if it's playable value until something happens to Fournette. Would I play Damian Harris or Miles Sanders? I play Damian Harris. Because his name is Harris and not Sanders. That's the more important part. His name is not Miles Sanders. Look, I don't know what the hell is going on with Sanders. First of all, he's coming off a hamstring issue that was an issue the last, I think, the two weeks from like about the middle of August on. He's fine. He's off the injury report. Sounds like they were trying to preserve him. They put a lot of effort into making sure we all think he's the starting running back there. And I think he is. We also know they have other running backs there. Kenneth Gainwell who maybe didn't show as impressively as they hoped for this summer. That's entirely possible, too. A lot of talk about him early on, you know, being a thing. And it seemed like, you know, he didn't cash in on that. Boston Scott is still there. Trey Sermon there now, too. But but I'm playing Harris over Sanders and taking my chances. Maybe I regret that. It's really a good matchup for the Philadelphia offense. Um, but Sanders doesn't seem to have the receiving role, despite two years ago he was a pretty big playmaker in the receiving game, right? Just, just a weird vibe there with me for Sanders, so... Uh, maybe that's putting me off. If you don't share in that and you want to take advantage of the matchup against Detroit, go ahead. But I'm playing Harris. Dak or versus uh, Tampa Bay or Cousins. And by the way, that's a great way to ask questions if you're in here doing this, uh, you know, just to help me process a little more quickly. I mean, I know the matchups and most of them, like I would have known Cousins and Dak, but, but there's other players where you kind of hit me and I'm trying to move fast and uh, maybe I'm not ready for them. I'm probably still playing Dak in this one. I would, totally wouldn't talk you out of Cousins. Totally would not talk you out of Cousins. Uh, just because I'm intrigued by this offense and I want to see what it is, and he has a lot of great weapons, but I'm playing Dak. 
right? And just, you know, if it sounds like I'm vacillating on these, I try to get to the point and give you the person that I really wanted, that I would, you know, give you the answer and let you know what it is. But I mean, me pretending I'm 100% right is silly. And you, me pretending I'm like super uh, prescient and better able to read the future than you, I kind of talk through, you know, what I like and don't like. And I think in the end, the, the, you know, the decision should be yours because I'm not going to be there Monday when you're going, damn it, why did I start who that guy said? He's so stupid. Right? I mean, you're the one who's going to have to sit there and say, oh, I started that guy because I like that guy. So if I'm telling you to go against a hunch, play your hunch. Don't play my hunches. I have hunches. I have guys that I'm pretty locked in on. And I mean, you know, we can all probably agree on a lot of guys. Uh, you know, a lot of players or a lot of circumstances, but there's always shades of gray. There's always nuance. There's, you know, we want black or white answers. We want this or that. Nothing is this or that. Not a damn thing, except, well, maybe a couple things. All right. Uh, can I talk about my thoughts on Ertz this week? Yes. Yeah, this, this is a concern for me. Like, I'm, I'm super invested in Zach Ertz. I drafted him heavily. Uh, there was, I was taking him ahead of like guys like Dallas Goddard. So I was getting him a little ahead of ADP probably and super excited about him. The calf has been a lingering issue. Sounds like he'll play. Cliff Kingsbury made it sound like he'll play, but clearly said, but we don't know how much they have Trey McBride. They have Max Williams. You're right. And Rondale Moore is out and it's a tight end premium league. Boy, I'd be tempted to play him. Jimmy, tell me who your other tight ends are before I get too involved in this and talk myself into Zach Ertz, uh, against my better judgment. Ah, Pedro Gallup or Lazard for the year. Oh, I, you know, I'm in on Lazard. I mean, you know, I think you've got both of them at really reasonable prices, though. So, I, you know, the one you have is probably going to be fine. Like my, Michael Gallup's going to be in a really good spot when he gets out. I think Lazard is going to be the wide receiver one here. Why do I think that? Because Aaron Rodgers says he is every chance he gets. Do you think Aaron Rodgers is not invested in that narrative after he said it, what, 100 times? You know, joked about him being a future Hall of Famer. I mean, and granted, it was just joking. But, you know, these little comments over the course of the entire offseason, right, from the time Devontae Adams was traded on. And I also get it. You know, the, Alan Lazard has been a wide receiver four for fantasy purposes his entire career, except for one game against New Orleans two years ago. Look it up, people. He was really good. And also, he was a kind of a trusted weapon in the red zone and in the end zone last year. But, but I think, you know, don't – Totally, I'm not totally dismissing that Aaron Rodgers is not capable of making things he wants to happen happen on the football field. And if he wants Lazard to be his number one, I think there's a pretty good chance that it happens, right? So uh, for me, it's Lazard, uh, but I don't think it's like, a, again, these things aren't black and white. For me, Lazard. Bob, it says Dominic Conti, with this scenario, two quarterbacks, PPR league, two quarterback PPR league. If I pick Mahomes with a fourth pick, if he's available, would you pick Kelsey with round two pick if available? So I think we're getting stack crazy here. You know, it's a great DFS technique. It's probably okay in best ball, I think. You know, I don't know how great it is in season long. Let me explain. So your team is on the field and you have Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey and they're the Chiefs have a great drive, and it heads into scoring territory, and Clyde Edwards-Alaire runs in a touchdown. There's, there's a series where your two players don't, you know, don't get the payoff. Maybe they helped you get there, and all that's well and good. I just think you know, when you're invested in a single offense, when you're not diversified, and you know, look, I've done plenty of this, and I do it organically. I don't try to force the issue. Uh, I might try to do it at a cheaper price point. But like, if Kelsey is the best player there, yes, absolutely. If there's other really good players there that you think, man, I really need a really good running back here, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't force my uh, force the issue with Mahomes. Mahomes is going to give you leverage over the field. There's no doubt. But every time that the let's say the Chiefs have a bad game and the other team is on the field, every time that other team's on the field, your guy, the clock is ticking and you're not getting points. All right. So just be mindful of that. Putting all your eggs in one basket uh, can be a really good thing if it's a super good basket. The Chiefs basket is super good. Uh, but even at that, I'm just like, I think this is more of a DFS and uh, and best ball strategy for me. Uh, PPR half point, Ramondre Stevenson or Damian Pierce. Uh, clear path to workload goes to Damian Pierce, but it's a crappy offense. Or uh, it was last year, right? Maybe that's why Damian Pierce is there. They average 3.4 yards a carry. They're the fewest touchdowns, I think, rushing touchdowns in the NFL in like the last 20 years or something. So... 
you know, he's got a clear path to workload uh, behind a lousy offensive line and an offense that wasn't great. Ramondre Stevenson has a great deal of upside. I'm probably chasing the sure volume, so I'm probably chasing Pierce. Um, but if at the end of the season, Ramondre Stevenson and blows up and becomes the lead factor in this offense. Again, in, in New England, you have the issue where Damian Pierce also probably in his last year, year in New England. Or do they run the wheels off him? Does uh, Ramondre Stevenson's big playability win him out? I mean, you know, the fact that these are the questions we're asking ourselves versus that isn't a question with Pierce. The question with Pierce is, does he leave the field on third downs? Uh, maybe Rex Burkhead is a guy that can cut into his workload. Well, that's a different conversation than Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson cutting into each other's workload, right? Rex Burkhead is neither of those guys. So I'm probably leaning Pierce there. Zara. Cansabadian. How am I? I'm good. Thank you. Uh, thanks for coming to the live stream. What are you looking for with this one streaming defenses? I'm looking for disruptive playmakers at all levels, right? So, and, and good matchups and lousy quarterbacks and rookie quarterbacks. Uh, so mostly I'm targeting the quarterback first and foremost. And then I'm looking, does this team have playmakers that are capable of disrupting the offense a little bit? Uh, so so the, the, honestly, those are the primary things. Number one, I want to attack a weak quarterback or a weak offense. Uh, and number two, I want to attack it with some defenders who are capable of making disruptive plays. Iron Eddie, there he is. Ramondre or Damian Pierce, half point PPR. I'm still probably leaning Pierce. Again, not talking anyone out of Ramondre Stevenson. This is more of a you question if you want to play Stevenson because you know it's going to be a timeshare, right? I mean, that's the, that's the concern. I think our, our algorithm, just based on, you know, the matchups and the past production of Stevenson, they're ranked consecutively on our current cheat sheet. My gut feeling is, is Pierce, but it's that close. So if you have a feeling, Iron Eddie, go with it. If it's T, go with it. In uh, a half-point PPR, maybe that works a little bit more in Pierce's favor, though. Brian Larkin, half-point PPR, need one, two of the three, A.J. Dillon. Penny or Deontay Johnson. Damn it. Why did it have to be a really good receiver? Um, <clears throat> I'm going to play A.J. Dillon for sure. I'm playing Rashad Penny like he's a true feature back until Kenneth Walker's back. So, you know, I'm not a, super excited to leave Deontay Johnson on my bench. You must have a really great lineup, a really great roster. So uh, you probably have some wiggle room there. Uh, I'm playing those two running backs. Scampers. I have to sit here with me, he who started Allen Robinson. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, at least it wasn't Akers and Robinson. That's, you know, I'm going to remind everyone again, one more time. What happened week one is not what's going to be week two. And what is in September is not in October. There will be an evolution. Things will get better or worse, but we'll gain clarity. And that's the important part. We'll start to get an understanding of these single standalone issues are, one off, or if they're the start of a trend. I mean, we just have one data point to work with on this right now. Although, in Akers' case and Robinson's case, we can take this back to last year, man. Allen Robinson had a horrible year. Maybe it wasn't Justin Fields. Oh, my God. Maybe it wasn't the horrible play calling in Chicago. Oh, no. Maybe Allen Robinson just isn't good anymore. Maybe we'll find that out, but I'm banking on him not being that. But, but these are all, you know, within the range of possible outcomes here. I'm using the Matt Harmon phrase because I love it. It's one of the best phrases in fantasy football because that's what we're working with here. We're not working in absolutes or certainties. Again, there is no black and white. It's all nuanced, people. Uh, Ramondre or Tony, TD only. Ramondre, I don't know what the hell Kadarius Tony is. I do know what Kadarius Tony is. Let me rephrase that. I think we saw exactly what Kadarius Tony is in Dallas last year where he had, what, nine catches, 10 catches, uh, almost 200 yards of offense, and he punched somebody in the face. That's who he is. He's both those guys. He's also a guy that doesn't show up every week. I don't know. I'm going Stevenson in that one. I want to see what the Giants offense. You guys chime in here. I appreciate everyone coming to the chat, and, and I'm answering questions, but entertaining your, uh, your thoughts and theories here as well. I know Mr. Scampers has feelings about this. I know the 32-bit people do as well. Um, <clears throat> so chime in. And Pedro, I know you do. Um, so chime in if you have thoughts on some of these things, or if you disagree with what I'm saying, feel free. If you like what you're hearing here, hit the like button. If you don't like me at all, hit the dislike button, hit it twice. It'll make you feel better. Hit the subscribe button as well and go to footballdiehards.com and check us out there as well. 
Um, let's see. Uh, Hardman, Hunt or Claypool in the flex, one point PPR. Thank you in advance, says Michael E. Y. Menesis. Menesis. I'm also a renowned name butcher. You're welcome. Hardman, Hunt or Claypool. I'm probably playing Kareem Hunt of this group, although I have, you know, I think he's probably the safest play. I, I have a, I have a little bit of a hunch on Claypool. You know, like I mean, we be if you know Claypool seems very touchdown dependent, right? And, and so, uh, yeah, he's had those touchdowns, right? We saw him as a rookie. We didn't see him last year. Did they come back this year? I think he's a huge swing for the fence play to me. Uh, I'm playing Hunt. He's the safe play. 32-bit, pick two, Chase Edmonds. Oh, man, Penny, Dylan, Dobbins, or Carter. Uh, so I'm going to throw out Dobbins and Carter, and I'm going to throw out Chase Edmonds. I'm going to play Penny and Dylan. I, I like Dylan an awful lot. I might, my love of Dylan may be irrational. Ever since Aaron Rodgers said both these running backs might be capable, him, Dylan, and, and J Aaron Jones, might catch 50 balls this year. Maybe they do. Um, but either way, I think you're going to see A.J. Dylan get a significant workload. I know when he gets, I think the numbers are when he gets 16 touches, the the thing, good things happen, right? So, uh, and I think he'll get those. I think he'll get to those numbers pretty well. Let's see if I have the numbers up here because I thought it was interesting. Damn it, maybe I don't. Hmm. Uh, thought I had the numbers in front of me, but I don't. But it's very intriguing, and I'm very, I'm, I'm all in on Dylan. I thought he was a great value, uh, and Penny, like. So, I mean, I just, I, 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 we're going into the season and like, I, I don't expect Penny to be the same guy he was down the stretch last year. Uh, the final six games of the season, 200 yards more rushing than any other back in the NFL. That was a league winning run by him. I don't expect that. But what I do expect, at least until Kenneth Walker is back, is a full workload. You know, Travis Homer and DJ Dallas may get some snaps here and there, but I don't think they're going to cut significantly in that workload for Penny. So those are my two. I do like Evans. Evans has grown on me. I'm, I haven't been keen on him like like through the first three quarters of the draft season and then like the last month I started going, I need more shares of Edmonds. I have a lot of shares of Raheem Mostert too, but uh, I got more shares of Edmonds. So I'm like not against this. I think this offense might be a lot better than maybe even we expect. Maybe we're not giving Mike McDaniels enough credit. Maybe we're not giving two enough credit, but a lot of weapons there as well. I think for me, this Seahawks offense is going to lean on the run. And, uh, and appreciate you inviting me to the spaces. I love doing those guys. Good time. Jimmy Williams, Pitts is my starting tight end, so Earth would be the flex or D. Pierce Hardman or plug in Henderson on free play. Ooh, be tempting. Are you, were you going to draft Henderson anyway, Jimmy? Because I think that's interesting. You know, a lot of these drafts, these high stake drafts, the draft after Thursday night's game, you can invest in these guys and put them in your lineup still, you know, that had big Thursday games. Is that the only game they're going to have all year? What's uh, It may add some interesting strategy. I might play Pierce in this one instead, just uh, if I'm playing it safe, because uh, I don't know what the workload is going to be for Ertz. I uh, don't know how capable he is. So again, officially questionable. Cliff Kingsbury said that he expects him to play. The question is how much. So that's, you know, that's, a, that's the issue for me. It's a concern. So I'm playing Pierce for the volume. Uh, and, uh, and, and like, if you're drafting Henderson anyway, I mean, that might be a good free play. Any thoughts on San Diego defense for the year? It's the Los Angeles chargers, Pedro. <laughs> um, yeah, I think they've added a lot of really good pieces and I like what they're doing. I think JC Jackson's not going to play this week, so that's not great news, but, uh, pass rush is going to be on point. Uh, it's a really good defense. I've drafted, I've invested heavily. Thank you, Tim Trama. Uh, appreciate it. Did I answer your question, Tim? Did I miss your question? I don't remember seeing you. I'm sorry. Dominic Conti in a PPR league, would you take McCaffrey over Taylor season long considering health issues? So this is a this is a you question. I have started like I, you know, look, nobody remembers second place in your league, right? And you know, the only thing that's that's hard about drafting McCaffrey is the baggage we carry. And I'm one who carries it. I have drafted him the last two years and I've missed those 23 games. Um, but I realized why I drafted him. I realized why I'm drafting him this year. It's pure upside. When he's on the field, he's a player and a half. Uh, Jonathan Taylor's a player and a quarter. A solid player. Averaged 21 PPR points last year to Jonathan Taylor. Had some great games. Week 11 against Buffalo. Had that 50-plus point game. Had three games of over 30 points. We've seen Christian McCaffrey average 30 points in a season. We've seen him average, like I think, want to say 26 points per game over the course of the last three or four years when he's healthy. So, so I mean, that's the discussion, right? Jonathan Taylor's never missed, uh, you know, 
time with injury. I mean, he had a little bit of a knee issue last year, played through it, was no problem, played all 17 games. I've talked to Jonathan Taylor, and he would remind you he never missed a practice in college. Not one. So very durable. Um, but by the same token, I am a firm believer that everyone and anyone who plays in the NFL can get hurt any damn time, right? And uh, I point to it, and I'll point to it again if you've heard this one before. Just bear with me. Look at the current ADP. How many players in the top 12 or so have not missed time due to injury? Granted, not 23 games over the last two years. That's a lot. But has it been a single chronic injury or has it been a series of misfortunate events? You know, if it was always the same knee that just fell apart or he gets hit in the same shoulder and he goes down and it's cost him time, that'd be a different story for McCaffrey, but it's been various things. So maybe he's just wound too tight. That's possible too. Um, but I like the – I'm playing the upside. I've started drafting McCaffrey over Taylor, but I can say this because I drafted a ton of Taylor. So all the drafts where I had first picks overall, I want to say from February – Probably until June, I picked Taylor exclusively. Then I started mixing it up a little bit. I started mixing it up a little bit because I have all the Taylor. All my eggs were in that basket. Another use of the same analogy that I did earlier. But but that's why. But I, but I think you could make a really strong argument for McCaffrey over Taylor, but it's kind of a personal preference thing. There, I spun my wheels on that for a while. What are the odds that CEH ends up as top 15 running back this year? Not zero. It's been a good camp for him. I, you know, I don't want to say, I don't, you know, I don't even want to put it at 50, 50. I don't want to put it at, you know, that's a hard, that's a hard question. I look, he has that, he has that upside playing in a great offense, right? He's got to put it all together and he just has enough to this point. Does that mean he can't? I don't know. I think it kind of means he can't. <laughs> I think Derek McKinnon is going to be a limiting factor for him. Maybe eventually Isaiah Pacheco, but, but uh, I don't think he makes it there, but it's a, not as it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a non-zero chance. It's a better than zero chance for sure. I want to put it maybe 20%. That even seems high. Hmm. I don't feel good about that question, Kevin L. Stevens. Stop it. Mr. Scampers, maybe even more disappointing than Alan Robinson's usage was Moss's usage. Oh, my gosh. Darnell Mooney, wide receiver one this week and every week. Ah, Matt Donnelly, of course he is. Matt Donnelly loves, loves Darnell Mooney. Look, I mean, you could make that case. I, I like playing him as a wide receiver too, Matt, and getting that wide receiver upside, the one upside when I do play him. SFB, Claypool, or Patterson? I'm playing Patterson. We don't, so that's another one where we just don't know what the hell's going on, right? We've heard the talk that he's going to play more wide receiver. I think he'll still play plenty of running back. But we don't know. We didn't see him all summer. So it's a little dicey. I'm going to go ahead and play him. Uh, just because there's some uncertainty in Pittsburgh, too. I don't know how good or bad Mitchell Trubisky's going to be. I have a feeling maybe he's going to be better than we think. And if he's not, Kenny Pickett will be. But this week, um, I'm probably going with Patterson. <clears throat> and I think I have Patterson and Scott Fishbowl, by the way, and I'm playing him. I could check that, but I'm pretty sure I am. Ah. Damian, uh, Scott Mueller, or Damian Harris or Sammy Watkins, a full-point PPR flex. I'm probably playing Damian Harris. Again, I am mindful of the fact that Sammy Watkins is a week one all-star. It's been his thing, man. That's his jam. So if you want to if you want to take that chance, feel free. Damian Harris, you're dealing with Ramondre Stevenson. I've talked about it at length already. Don't want to get too deep into it. Um, I think Harris opens the game as a starter, but I don't know that 100% for sure. I do know Sammy Watkins will, just don't know what his workload will be either. So I'm going to play Damian Harris on the chance he gets more opportunities. Missed your dog this week. Give him a treat for me. Tara, the people love you. The cats are outside. With the yard guys. Thanks, uh, thanks, Bob. Love to see you each this year. All right. Looks like we've uh, cleared out all the questions. Thank you very much for coming. Appreciate you. Again, just love everyone coming here, talking a little football. I'm um, going to be back Wednesday night. Watch your emails. Watch my Twitter. Watch the FF Die at FF Diehards Twitter. Hit the, hit the channel here. Subscribe to the channel so you get notifications when I go live. We'll be back Wednesday night. Also, tonight, 9 p.m. Jamie Calandro and Eric Romoff, uh, DFS lineup show. These guys are smart. And then Jamie will be jumping on Sirius XM NFL radio. Uh, Dempsey and I will be on tonight from 8 to 11. They simulcast it on the Fantasy Channel. If you want to call in and ask more questions, uh, you can, but you have to call the NFL channel and not the Fantasy Channel. That's all. It's not hard. Um, you'll figure it out. Um, and also, you catch me on Monday nights, uh, 11 to 1 a.m., 11 p.m. to 1 a.m., Thursday nights, 11 to 1 p.m. We got live look-ins at the game, so 
we're having a good time, kind of like we do here. And then on Friday nights, uh, 10 to, I want to say, what is that? 10 to, 10 to midnight? 10 to midnight. I can't even tell time. So confusing. Week one's a jumble, right? It's exciting. All right, everybody. Again, thanks for coming. Really appreciate all, all, all of you and appreciate the conversation. Hope you find it helpful. If you don't, send me a note. Hit me up on Twitter uh, with suggestions, comments, criticisms, anything you got. I'm here for it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Scampers. Uh, joyous having you here and 32-bit guys as well. Appreciate it. Uh, everyone have a great day, Pedro. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye, Andrea.